Hey folks, how's it going? In this video we're going to look at properties of light, so let's get started. We're going to kick off the last subtopic of particles and waves part 1 by looking at wave particle duality, and specifically in this video we'll focus on what is meant by light and properties of light. So first of all it says from National 5 Physics you should already know the following properties of light. So remember light itself is an electromagnetic wave and it travels at 3 times 10 to the 8 meters per second, i.e. the speed of light in a vacuum. And remember waves have properties called frequency and wavelength, and we can use the wave equation V equals F lambda to find the frequency or wavelength of a wave. You should also know by now in your physics career that light reflects, refracts, and diffracts, and without it, we would not be able to see the beauty of our universe. So our eyes have light receptors to allow us to see things. Now I'll just show you a quick simulation to help you remember reflection, refraction and diffraction. So we'll start here by looking at reflection of waves. So if I click play here, you'll notice that we have these planar waves, these straight line waves which are called wavefronts. And the distance between any two of these, remember, is a wavelength, one wavelength. And you can see what's happening to the light here is coming in and reflecting off the surface here. Now if I pause that and then add some labels, you'll see that the light comes in at a certain angle and is then reflected back at the exact same angle. And this is called the law of reflection, where the angle of incidence, which remember is the angle between the normal and incident ray, is equal to the angle of reflection, which is the angle measured between the normal and the reflected ray. So if you've got light coming in at 30 degrees to the normal, say, then that light is going to reflect at an angle of 30 degrees to the normal. Remember in National 5 Physics, we also looked at refraction of waves, which is when light changes speed when it goes from one material to another. So for example, our light's going from air here into a glass block, and that means it's going to slow down because it's going into a more dense material. But we also saw that when the light goes in at an angle to the normal, so remember the normal would be drawn at 90 degrees to this block here, and if the light's coming in at an angle to that, which it will do here, then the light should change direction when it enters the block, and it will then change direction upon leaving the block as well. So if I click play here, we'll see what happens. So you can see that the light's bending down the way, and then it bends back to have the same position that it did to begin with. And the light should be travelling faster outside of the block, and then slower inside the denser block. And if I pause it, you also see what's happening to the wavelength of the waves. So here we've got a bigger wavelength, i.e. the distance between any two wavefronts here, so that's one wavelength, which is bigger outside of the block. But then when it enters the block, not only is the speed decreasing for the light, the wavelength is also decreasing. And remember that's an important thing to remember, that when light goes into a more dense material, it's going to decrease in speed and wavelength, but its frequency stays the same. And we can label this here to show what's happening. So the light's coming in at an angle to the normal here, and we can label the angle of incidence there between the normal and the instant ray. The light's then bending down towards the normal, and then it's bending away from the normal again when it leaves the block. Lastly, we've got diffraction of waves, and remember this is when waves bend through a gap or around an obstacle. So if I click play here, you'll see we've got our planar waves, i.e. our straight waves called wavefronts, and we've got a large gap. So when the waves pass through the large gap, you'll see that the ends of them are bending a wee bit. But that's with a large gap. So what happens when we've got a smaller gap like this? Well, if I click play, you'll see what's happening to the waves this time. They are bending a lot more than before. And that's because they're trying to squeeze through the small gap to get through it. So we could say the smaller the gap, the larger the diffraction. We could also compare wavelength through the gap as well. So let's say we kept the gap the same size here, but changed the wavelength of the waves, i.e. the distance between the crests of the waves or the wavefronts. So if I click play here, remember this is the one we saw earlier, where it's going to bend the ends a wee bit. But if we were to change to a longer wavelength like this this time and keep the gap the same size, and click play, you'll see we've got a bigger distance between the wavefronts this time, and we've got a greater bending. So we could say that the longer the wavelength, the greater the diffraction. Jumping back to the notes now, it says throughout history, thought has been divided between two main theories, that light is a wave or light is a stream of particles. Modern physics now takes the view that light can act both like a wave and like a particle without contradiction. This is called wave-particle duality. This section is concerned with proving that light can behave like particles. Note that the next section on interference, which is in Particles and Waves Part 2, is concerned with proving that light can behave as waves. So in this section on the photoelectric effect, we're going to be focusing on light behaving like particles rather than as waves. But we will go on and see the wave stuff when we do interference. That's all for this video folks, thanks for watching. If you made it to the end, I really appreciate it. Make sure to give the video a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you in the next one. Take care. Whoa.